Hello everyone. Welcome back to part four of the electrochemistry discussion. This is Dr. Rhonda Cofill from Calhoun Community College. In this section, we, we've been, okay, so let me back up. In the previous sections, we've been looking at standard conditions, okay, using E0 of the cell for the cathodes, anodes, and calculating the overall cell potential. In this part, we are going to look at what if we don't have standard conditions and um, how do we how do we account for that and those changes? And so the, the quick answer is we use the Nernst equation. Okay, so if your concentrations are not one molar, that's usually when, what you're going to see. You're going to see a different concentration other than your one molar because we don't always use one molar. Um, some things are, you know, a little more um, toxic. Or, or whatever, or they just don't, the reaction doesn't work right. And so when we change the, the concentrations reactants so that they're not one molar, it does affect, affect the delta G. And so this has to do, if you, the throwback to equilibrium is that we're not at equilibrium now, we're at Q. Okay, and so we're messing with the delta G zero, we're messing with the equilibrium, and so we have to have a way of correcting for that. And so because the delta G really is what's determining the cell potential, um, the voltage will be different if your ions aren't at standard conditions. And so we use something called the Nernst equation. Okay, it's a very famous equation. Um, when, it, when it's not at standard conditions, we use the Nernst equation for correction. And there is, there is a um, natural log version of this, okay, using Faraday's constant and things like that. Or um, we have a log version, which is the one we're going to use um, because there's a, a little bit fewer things to have to put in there and all that, okay? All right, so this is assuming, though, that we are still at 25 degrees C. So we're still doing this at room temperature. Now, if you changed the temperature, you would have to use this one, okay? But at room temperature, we can actually use, um, th th we've done some of the math for you already. So we can use these are the, the standard, of, standard cell potential and then use this as the correction, 0.0592 volts divided by N, which is the number of moles of electrons. So remember me showing you in previous lessons how to figure out how many electrons if, if you've got a balanced chemical equation. And then you take the log of Q, which Q is basically the um, equilibrium expression or dissociation expression. Um, if we were to use this other one, F, we're going to see that in another section, but um, F is Faraday's constant, which is 96,500 coulombs per mole of electrons. And then you're going to use the energy R, um, the 8.314 joules over mole K. All right. And so we converted the, the uh, natural log to log, and the Nernst equation becomes this, is, which is the form we're going to be using. So the, the, the application of this is to determine the cell potential for an electrochemical cell based on the following two half reactions. And I'm being nice to you. I'm telling you which one's oxidized and I'm giving you the number of electrons and all that. Okay. Well, you think I'm being nice to you, right? So you got to watch me. So um, in the, it's the oxidation. Okay. So anox. So I know that one's going to be the anode. And that one's going to be the cathode. So I told you which 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 was which, okay? And I sh I showed you that you've got two electrons in this one and three electrons in that one. Now, just because I have balanced those two half reactions for you does not mean that I told you how many electrons. Mm hmm. Why is that? Well, because if you actually um, combine these half reactions back, you're going to find that you have more electrons than two or three. You have six. Why? Because when I balance those, I have to multiply that by three and that by two in order to balance my electrons. Now, that's going to, you know, that's going to change this whole thing to um, three Cu solid plus two Mn. O4 minus plus 8H plus plus um, 
six electrons go into three Cu two plus plus two MnO two solid I think sorry look having I have to look up there because I don't have my glasses on solid plus um, four H two O's plus six electrons so I'm doing that because when when I the n is how many total electrons are being transferred so I produce two at my anode and I'm using three at my cath at my cathode so I have to balance that so that I would actually have six electrons okay with me because I had to get my six electrons on both sides so even though it balanced the numbers, it didn't really um, help me completely. And then, and so also I know that when I look up my anode, it's going to be a positive 0 0.34 volts. And my cathode is going to be positive 1.68 volts because remember you don't multiply them by numbers just because I had to multiply the mass stuff by numbers and the electrons to get it you don't it does not affect the the cell potential okay does not affect the cell potential because it's an intensive property all right so once I've done all that and I had to do that so I would know how many electrons okay the equation is pretty easy it's the E0 of the cell minus 0 0.0592 volts divided by n times the log of q all right so i got some other stuff i got to look at all right so you can go ahead and you can calculate the q because it's giving you the um concentrations of these things okay so you it just like before you got products over reactants so you could do it over here on the side and do it but i'm actually going to just like put it in the whole long thing and and um, have the log of whatever q is um, and then put the electron numbers in so bear with me so but now because we are using this balanced equation that's going to affect the cubes and the t squares and all that when you're calculating q just i say let me go ahead and do it all right so q is going to be equal to not a solid not a liquid right so it's going to be equal to the copper 2 plus cubed not a solid okay times the or divided by the MnO4 minus squared times the H plus raised to the eighth oh it's crazy numbers right okay and so I put that in so Q is going to be equal to so I look up here and I see what the concentration of the copper 2 plus is and that is 0 0.010 molar cubed divided by 2 molar which is your MnO4 and your MnO4 is squared times your h plus which is one molar oh thank goodness molar to the eighth all right and all of those are molars and so then i'm going to have to in you know one to the eighth power thankfully is one so i don't have to worry about that too much um so then i'm going to put those in my calculator and figure out what that number is okay and um let me see if i wrote it down <laughs> no I didn't I just wrote I just I'm, I did it so I'm gonna I'm so I'm gonna take Q I've, I've defined Q I didn't multiply it out I just gonna put it in this overall reaction so E of the cell I just wanted to see what it was so I wouldn't get confused so the E0 of the cell um, we had 1.68 cathode uh, 0.34 anode so the E0 of the cell is going to be cathode minus anode. It's going to be um, 
1.68 minus 0 0.34, right? So that's going to give me 1.34. So that's the E0 of the cell. So 1.34 volts, and it was a positive number, minus 0 0.0592 volts divided by 6 moles of electrons times the log of this crazy thing, 0 0.010 molar cubed divided by 2 squared times 1 to the 8th. So I'd do this in chunks if I were you, and I'd like to do this first, okay? And then you're going to multiply that by this, and then you're going to subtract that from the E0 of the cell. So when you do the fancy schmancy math, you got E of the cell is going to be equal to 1.34 volts minus, um, and what you should get from all of that is a negative 0 0.065 volts. So that's this whole thing. Okay. And so then the E cell, notice it's not E0 of the cell because it's, it's not at 25 degrees. I mean, it's not at um, 1 molar concentrations. It's going to be equal to a positive 1.41 volts. So it got more positive, and so it got more likely to be spontaneous. Okay? So that's the Nernst equation. You have to know how many moles of electrons. In this case, it was 6. You have to know, you, you'll be given the concentrations, because that's the whole reason you're having to use Nernst. Okay, which um, you plug in and get your Q. You take the log of your Q, multiply that by the 0 0.0592 divided by your electrons, and then you subtract all of that from the E0 of the cell, what it would be under standard conditions. So it went from 1.34 to 1.41 by changing those concentrations. And here's one for practice. It's almost exactly like that. And then I have some that are um, for more practice. And remember, sometimes these make you think a little bit. Um, for this one, if you if you um, if you're multiplying something by three, then just say the other one is one. Okay, so three over one. So your Q your Q would be three in this case, and you can use that and, and calculate this. Don't want you to hurt your brains, okay? Um, and then in the in this one, you shouldn't have any problem because it tells you what the H2 is, and um, you've and and just aside for this one is if you've got molar and you've got atmospheres, you don't have to convert them. You can just put them in there as they are. So you just you just put your um, hydrogen concentration over your um, molarity for your H plus and you can just put them in there and they work just fine you don't have to convert them to atmospheres or anything okay so in all electrochemical cells oxidation occurs at the anode and reduction occurs at the cathode the voltaic cells which is what we've been looking at so far um, have been where your anode is the source of your electrons and your cathode draws the electrons okay it, it accepts those in electrolytic cells though non-spontaneous um, and not they're non-spontaneous so the E0 of your cell is going to be negative in electrolytic cells because you're and you're going to be doing the opposite um, direction of what you were doing because electrons are being forced from the cathode to the anode by the addition of electricity. All right, and so when you come back, we're going to talk about electrolytic cells, okay?